So, I've noticed that there are some of you here. Oh, hmm? there are some of you here who I blocked. I want to tell you why. First, welcome back. If you stuck to me, even despite the fact that uh, I already gave up on you, may God bless you. If you're here because you missed some other things somewhere that you'd like to see and you were just here for Udaku, Udaku means like for backbiting and getting bad, things to bad mouth me about, it's your own problem. Me, I'm here for entertainment of all manners and everything I say on my pages on social media, I say them with a sober mind. I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm saying, because if I was not sober enough to know what I'm doing on social media, I would not be here five years down. So please know that there's nothing that is going to change about me speaking my mind, me talking about my own stories, me giving out my opinions, me teaching my people, me passing messages about the diaspora that I feel like our young ones should know, me pinpointing wrongs from our parents on behalf of everybody who cannot speak. Any story that involves me personally, and I feel like it should be shared, it will be shared. Those ones who are not courageous enough, they should not go committing suicide because they think they're lonely. I want them to know that there's no need to commit suicide. There's no need to give up in life. There's no need to feel lonely. There's no need to feel like you know you're not loved because many of us go through these things. You are not alone. That is my message to you. You don't have to do anything about it, but at least feel that you belong in this world. All the things that happen to you happen to all of these people watching too. It's, not, it's just that not everybody is courageous enough to show and to share. And me, I have nothing to be ashamed of. Every part of my world that I feel like sharing, I will share it. So just train your mind and your soul to take things in a way that will make you live longer, in a way that will keep you healthy. But not always digesting negativity, feeling like everybody's talking about you. I was given this calling, this gift, to speak boldly, and my platform, I have found it here on the internet. How you digest stuff is not my problem, because even me, how I digest my things should not be affecting you. How I digest my things and how I break them down can only affect you if you are guilty. Number one, Kenya Muzima, East Africa, Mambo Niapa, Kila Kitu Ni Tamu Tamu, Tamu 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 Zaidi. I tell you, I must say that I hate nobody. The word hate is not in my world. That word hate from the word go, it was something that was forbidden by my God. That is how I learned it in um, Sunday school in my church. The word hate is not just alive in me, not at all. So if you use that word hate in my world or in my surrounding, it is up to you. That is coming from you. What you think is what you say. I cannot control you. I don't love everybody. There are people that I can't stand, but I pray for them instead. Another thing, living in the diaspora is not easy, okay? Living far away from family is not easy. It's not easy at all. But I found my way of uh, living a healthy life, mentally, innerly, and that is by talking it out. I talk my things out, and uh, with that, when I have any troubles, I heal out of it. So I don't need to rush going to share my issues with people who are going to turn them into backbite topics. I'd rather come to my Facebook page where people know very well I'm here to work and my work is sharing such things. I come talk to my people and then I see from the comment section how people engage. I see my inbox. I have so many messages. People tell me a lot. And then I feel like, oh, I need something positive. But if I find that the, uh, the comments are the opposite of what I thought, then I change that. I change myself. I say, okay, this was not for everybody. Maybe I'm the one who was wrong. Then you find that maybe I deleted that video. I go and reflect. I go and take time in my bathroom, that is where I pray. I close the door, sit down. I have a, it's called Borden Heitsu. On the floor there's a heater. So when I sit there, I feel the warmth, I close my door and I just meditate and tell God, if I did wrong on that live or on that story, please, by the time I'm waking up tomorrow morning, may I be sober enough to know whether to delete it or not. But if I find that God is not telling me that it's wrong, I will get it to YouTube. That is me. So don't even dream of ever changing Teri Nyangir. This proud chocolate, Terry chocolate, she'll never change. What will change her is next life. If maybe I'm born somebody else. <laughs> Sorry for those who, who go back to me if you're regretting. <laughs> I'm here to stay. Now, I want to tell those who are here who are watching me and who cannot access my wall, which I'm always very active on, Terry chocolate. 
If you're here listening to me and you're wondering why I blocked you, reflect. I don't block people without a reason. I don't block anybody without a reason. I don't even mistake my blockings. Because to block, you have to go and take somebody's name, scroll down, go to blocks, and then put their name. And I can't do that when I'm not sober. Even if you're my friend since birth, and you suddenly realize I've blocked you, or I have blocked you, and then I've blocked you again. There is a reason. If you reflect properly and check your ways and look at your comments on other people's pages, you will find that there's a real reason why I've blocked you. Most of you guys, if you participated in those videos that were abusing me last year, just to remind you in a good way, if you ever participated in them on the comment section thinking I'm blocked, I cannot see, you are all blocked. I was checking the comment section to find who is a genuine friend of mine in quotes, who is there participating and cheering up. And I block all of you because I don't want to have such evil people around me. People who pretend in your face that they love you but behind your back when they think you're blocked, then they support negativity against you, you're not my friend. A cousin of mine also came to my inbox. I know you are, you are my, I don't know whether you're my supporter or not, but you used to be on my wall and I, we have never been friends, never ever in my life. I don't know, we've never been friends. You know, you can have relatives who are not, are not your friends. And one is like that one. We have never been friends. So I kind of tolerated you on my wall because I thought you have changed. Because you know, sometimes you grow up and you see people and you distance yourself from them. You know, you're a child, but you see how people are behaving in your life. And then you feel like, I don't want to, to get involved in this kind of life in future. Because you know, when children are growing up, the things they see happening with adults or with teenagers or with people older than them, they think that it will also attack them. And this is some of the things that I've, I've suffered in my life. Everything I saw while growing up, I was always thinking it's going to affect me too. So I try my best to, to find another way to get out of it. If I experience like a sister saying that they are seeing some things in their eyes, like I had a sister who died and she didn't like school. So she would just pretend like, oh, she's seeing, I don't know what, she's seeing some things in her eyes. So I used to wonder, if I reach her age, will I also see those things? So I used to pray to God, I don't want to see those things. I don't want to see those things, oh God, please find a way of not giving me these things. You know? And then also when I was growing up, when I go to a funeral, for example, in the village, I see they're putting white, they're putting like uh, a cotton wool, like such a thing in their nose like this. You would see them in nose. So I used to think, I... So even me, when I die one day, I have to put on these things. So me and my friends, we'd go and lie somewhere down and put cotton wools in our noses to practice, just to see if we will survive death, if we will really manage to breathe while dying. You know, we couldn't know that, uh, that a dead person is, is not breathing. So, and I saw any of my cousins or any of my friends around me or my neighbors who are older than me behaving in a certain way or acting in a certain way or having some funny attitudes. I was trying to avoid you with all means. I have distanced myself, like I said, because of the things I saw before in my life. So when I tolerate you like that, and I pray in my heart that please don't bring those things you used to do when you were young, don't bring them, on, don't bring them here. Then suddenly I see you supporting somebody who you don't even know how they started clashing with me. Somebody who I personally feel I have no problem with, and you, you are there typing, Ma wing it no. So you what, what, what? You are cheering up a case that first of all is not even there. Secondly, you don't know nothing about it. Thirdly, the person you're cheering, you've never even seen how. How am I going to again tolerate you on a page? When I see that such a comment, I, I get you out before you start clashing with me personally directly. So that is why, my sister, I blocked you. So just to remind you, I've never blocked anybody without a reason, okay? I block you because of your behaviors and because of the people you associate with. If they're not kind of uh, matching with my blood, if they're giving me some goosebumps, I block you. I don't want you in my life. So I don't like to be frustrated. I don't like to feel frustrated. I don't want to feel like I'm in freedom in this life of mine. It's a small, short life. You never know when it's going to end. And I don't want to feel confined. That is me personally. May God bless you for understanding that. I post those things on YouTube knowing very well that you who are all blocked, that you watch them. And I want you also to, to see them. The things that I want you to see are the things that are on my wall on Facebook, Terry Chocolat. I, we do a lot of things that are private also with my friends and people who, who are there. My, the people who are genuinely there. We do a lot. We share a lot of pictures and uh, we joke around with posts and we do a lot of fun. Those are things that I don't share on YouTube. So what lands on YouTube is supposed to reach you. Anything that lands on YouTube 
Don't feel like, oh, she's thinking that now she's blocked us on Facebook. Now we, we, we cannot see her. We are seeing her on YouTube. I beg, I know you have seen me on YouTube. The thing is, you're not seeing everything. Unless you have a pseudo. So may you not be smiling so much that, oh, that, uh, that blocking me doesn't bring me anything. It brings me something. Yeah, so you know. But if you feel like things have changed and you feel like apologizing, then we can talk. My inbox is always open, so you can always talk to me here. If you can't access me on my Terry Chocolat page, you can always write to me here. Then we see how to solve things because I'm a very forgiving person. My heart is written in my face. I forgive, but I don't forget. Anything that is in my heart, I speak it out. After I've spoken, it's empty. Okay? But my memories are still there. And that one you have to blame God. If you feel like I keep records of wrong, then it's your own problem. That is not my problem. The person who created my brain and my memories and put up that big space for memories is the person you should blame, not me. I think I kumbuka everything, every single thing. But it doesn't mean that I should punish you for that. No way. All I do is to pray for you and talk it out. Finish business. Let me play you one song. Lady Maureen, you know, Lady Maureen, I am her number one fan. I just don't talk nowadays because I was stopped. I was really interested in helping that girl those days, in my own capacity because I know I, nobody can help her that much, only God can do. But I really wanted to, 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 to do my part. That was last year when things were hot. Then, when I just gave my suggestion, which is actually on YouTube, you can go and watch, it's still there in Doluo, if you understand Doluo. You poor, I was abused. I was abused and my, my, my words were twisted, yet they are live on YouTube. If you want to go and watch, just go and watch there. I'm wearing some t-shirt pink with the uh, Apollo t-shirt in pink and he has written embrace. Go and watch it and then you remind yourself. So I shut up. Not that I shut up because I, I what? I just shut up because if they think they know best, let them help. But it doesn't deter me or stop me from loving her voice. Me, you, musicians, do musicians, what I love about you when I play your songs is your voice and your talent. Not like I love you, love you, love you, kiawa, love you, sweet, kiss, kiss, love, love, sex, sex, kiawa. No, I love your voice. Because that voice is a gift from God. That act of singing well and this, this, this cloudy voice like Lady Maureen's voice. And I don't know what music does with you guys, but music does a lot to me. Especially now I am into Afro soul. These lures, most nowadays I'm just playing it there because... Um, I'm just playing them because you're used to it like that. But me, Terry, when I'm in my house, let me give you an example of what I play if they won't block me. If I'm, I'm in my house, like, privately, like now, of course, when I close this, this thing, I will play songs like this one, for example. Just play a little bit, just a little bit. Something like that. Or I'd play, like, uh, this one here. If I see you, we about Luo music. I am a music girl and I, I have a lot of uh, kinds of music that I play. I'm not just into Luo music alone. Luo music is just, I, I said it because those days when I was doing it, YouTube was not so big. Like YouTube had just started. And I felt like abroad here, when you like switch on German, German, German radio, what they play, they keep repeating the same songs every day because they're, they're songs that are uh, the, the producers or the makers of those songs have a contract with them. Boring. Like, even if it's a nice song, but it's played every day, the same song, you feel like the world is, is running down. Like, especially this time of Corona now. You feel like you're dying. Those days when I used to, like, feel, feel, feel homesick. When you listen to such songs in German radio, and then when they finish, they're talking German. You feel like your world has ended. You feel like you've been, you've been thrown in the den of lions. You feel like you're dying. It was so depressing. So I thought, let me get our music from Kenya. So I looked for my CDs that I used to have at Amogi FM. My CDs, my what? I bought some music online on iTunes. I, I collected a lot of music. I went home to, to, to Kisumu Stage. I bought a lot of CDs. I went to uh, Kasangas at uh, Ambassador in Nairobi. They used to have some Kasangas shop for Gospels and everything. I bought CDs. Those days when you still could buy CDs and these pirate issues were there. I bought a lot of CDs. I bought a lot of CDs. I came down to Germany, came up to Germany, I mean, and I downloaded everything on my laptop. I have that white laptop. I don't know where it is. I think it's upstairs in my studio. It has a CD drive here. I downloaded everything into this library here. 
which is re- re- really big. My, my library is really big. Let me just put for you songs you see. See, this is all music that I've collected in the years. In my collection. I've got all kinds of music. That is what encouraged me or like, he gave me this morale of starting the radio. So that I can share the music with you. And nowadays we have YouTube, you can listen to Kina Diamond, you can listen to what, but the pioneer as me, I was thinking about you a long time ago. So, what, 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 now because you are known, now because you've made, made money, now because what you think, this kitchen was made with your music and what, no. I was just there to help you, to help you, charity. And when my YouTube channel was lost, you guys, I just did not lose only my YouTube channel alone. I lost my emails, I lost everything, my Google account. Then when, when YouTube deletes your account, it deletes everything. You lose even the email address. All the, 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 the contracts that I had work-wise, jobs, my documents, doctor, doctor, doctor documents, my mother's documents, my photos in the Google Drive, my everything that was in my Google Mail. I lost all of it. I could not access it. YouTube, YouTube belongs to Google. When they, when they block your account and they delete it because some idiot uh, feels like their music is the one that, may, that makes you travel around the world or makes you become who you are, then it is a whole lot of, of loss. I lost a lot. Invoices and uh, payments, the, uh, details and some, a lot of things. I lost with that account. So... Next time you do to somebody such a thing, think twice. But no, we are still here. We are still here. God loves me. I have a cold, but it's not Corona. I think this cold of mine just came as a result of so much overthinking. You know, when everybody is thinking about the same thing, and in your mind, twenty-four hours, you're dreaming about Corona. You're waking up to Corona. You're listening to news. It's just Corona. Everything I'm listening to from morning to evening is just about Corona. If you go online, people are just about Corona. So you just start feeling the symptoms. Germany is really quiet. People have gone to work. Some people have gone to work, of course. We are not forced to go to work. But if you have to go to work, you go to work. Otherwise, people are really um, disciplined in Germany. We have taken up the measures. It's not, as, it's not as bad as in other countries. We know it may still come because it's something that is spreading. But the way guys have taken measures and are doing uh, social distancing, where I am, I mean, and I'm trying to be disciplined, I'm trying to, to, to uh, like, uh, think of others and to consider others and to work together, we really are not attacked where I am. So I thank God for that. If I thought there's someone who always wished to take control over the world completely, they can now see uh, clearly that it's possible. It makes me kind of come back to, to the ground, you know. It makes me kind of feel like we are all the same. The jet setters, now you have been confined into your four worlds. The people who really have never had time with their children, you are now forced to and it's good. So me, I'm seeing the advantages of this thing, the advantages. I just see that uh, it was high time we as a people of this world came back to factory settings. Sorry for those who have been attacked, those who are losing their, their loved ones. I feel sorry for Italy, I feel sorry for France, I feel sorry for all those countries that are really, really um, feeling the consequences. On the other side, I am thankful unto God for this kind of a thing, because anyway, it's written in the Bible that such things are going to happen. It's just many of us don't read the Bible. So it was high time we were taken back to reality, taken back to factory settings, taken back to realizing that we are all human beings. We are all the same. We can all be put back to our knees at the same time. And if there's somebody still feeling that they're above the other, it's not yet over. It has just started. <laughs> I hope you take my words positively. I love you all. Even you, my sisters, my brothers, my cousins, my uncles, my aunties. I love all of you, my friends, and especially the diasporan family. We are all one. Whether you're rich or poor, whether you're married or single, whether you are a single mother or a double mother, whether you're wherever, we are one. We feel the same things. We are in the same problem. And uh, being here and being able to be accepted here abroad, especially at this time of Corona, we are together, we are one, we are a family. If you could just realize that as the diaspora, we are a family and stop fighting one another, stop competing with one another. Notice that we are a family, we can come together and just build this our constituency and just be happy with one another. Let nobody try to show the other that they are better than the other one. 
Those of you who are in America, those of you who are in Norway, in Finland, in Sweden, in Germany, in France, in Dubai, in London, all of you, we are the same. We are all living in a foreign land. You should know that there's a reason why God chose you from your family back from Africa. Chose you, picked you up and told, and just brought you here and made you comfortable here. Because for me, I cannot really imagine myself having, being in Kenya now. Like, I go to Kenya, yes, holidays, and uh, I love my country, but I feel like I'm okay wherever God puts me to live in. Even if it takes me now and places me in Dubai, I'll feel comfortable. If it takes me back to Kenya and say, this is your will, God, I will start to adjust and feel comfortable. But as for now, I'm very satisfied with Germany. I'm very satisfied. I thank God. And I'm only trying to tell my sisters and brothers abroad that, okay, you know what? We are one. Stop hating. Stop fighting. Stop defying. Stop trying to please people you cannot please. Just bend law. Come back to, the, to reality and notice that you have sisters and brothers out here who may not be from your mother or your father but love you, feel like you go through the same things like you. Brown chocolates!